Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I want to read for the Summer Fling Readathon. <laughs> I'm very excited for this readathon. If you didn't know what this readathon is about, I'm linking my announcement video down below. Basically, Sarah from Steeped in Books asked a bunch of other booktubers to co-host, me being one of them, this month-long summer-related romance read-along. There are 12 prompts. You don't have to complete all of them. There is a little prompt board. It's kind of like a bingo board, but not really. You don't need to get bingo. You can just pick and choose what you want. You can get a row, a line, whatever floats your boat. Like, you can pick and choose. It doesn't matter what you do. It's just like a guideline. So, there are 12 prompts. I have picked out 12 books. I don't know how this is going to go because school starts for me in August. I move back to my college town in August and um, I don't know how school's gonna be like with the virus. I don't know how much reading time I'm going to be getting in. I've just picked out 12 so I can just pick and choose which ones I want. Hopefully I'll get a blackout. I'm okay if I don't. I have picked books that I'm very 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 excited to read. Every single one of them I want to read very badly. Hopefully this readathon will encourage me to actually finally read these books that I've been dying to read. So the first prompt is Down Home Country and for this one I picked Tangled Up in Christmas by Lisa Renee Jones. I read The Truth About Cowboys by L Lisa Renee Jones for my Christmas in Julyathon readathon and I really enjoyed that one surprisingly and that was a cowboy romance. It's set in modern day it just it's a romance that takes place on a ranch and it was really great because I live in Texas I love ranches so uh, I loved that one so I'm very excited to start book two this is on audible escape and this one I believe is set around Christmas time very excited I think this book the hero is the best friend to the hero from the first book and he seemed very broody and I think he might be a veterinarian if I'm not mistaken maybe I don't know I think one of the characters was a veterinarian in that book but <laughs> I don't know <laughs> next for big city life I have Neanderthal Mary's human by Penny Reed in July, I ended up reading the first book in the series, Neanderthal Seeks Human, I believe that's the title. And this is number 1.5 in the Knitting in the City series. This is on Audible Escape and this book takes place in Chicago. So that's how it fits the bill for big city life. And this is basically, as you can see by the cover, I believe the marriage journey from the couple from the first book. So I'm very excited. I loved the couple from the first book so very much. The heroine is so funny and so quirky, so I can't wait to read their story. For Author of Color, I'm going to be reading Zenny by Rebecca Weatherspoon. I finally got my audiobook in from Libby. I'm so very excited. This is the companion book to Rafe, even though I don't remember Zenny like at all in Rafe. Can someone like comment down below how Zenny is related to Rafe? Like please just let me know because I have no idea. I read Rafe like I think in January of this year so it's been a very long time but this one I believe is a marriage of convenience and both of them are bisexual and I believe both of them are plus size or only the woman is plus size. I don't really remember. Rebecca Weatherspoon is an author of color so this definitely fits the bill for that. I've been dying to read this book for so long but I just watched Lacey from Lacey Book Lovers uh, June wrap up and she said the audiobook isn't really great. So I'm very nervous because I, I plan to listen to it on audio. So <laughs> maybe if I don't feel for the narrator, I have to go buy my own copy. So we'll see how that one goes. Next for Hot and Spicy, I have A Beautiful Player by Christina Lauren. This is number three in the Beautiful Bastard series and I got this one off of Libby. The hold finally came in through my library. I'm trying to complete the Beautiful Bastard series so I can read all of Christina Lauren's backlist. I actually really enjoyed this series. This is their steamiest series ever and Probably some of the steamiest books I've read. I think number one is really, really, really steamy. I'm just having so much fun reading this series. And this series is definitely hot and spicy. There's some steam to it. <laughs> I don't know anything about this couple, like, at all. The first book was an office romance that was just so much fun to read. And I can't wait to continue on with the series. I have no idea what the third book is about. I get, I think it's about a guy in their friend group that doesn't have a significant other yet. So we will see how I feel about this one. Next we have Dark and Dangerous. For that one I am picking Riker by Jerry Glenn. This one is on my Kindle library. It is in my June ebook haul and this is the first book in the Kings of Corruption MC series. The reason why this fits the bill for Dark and Dangerous is because the cover is very dark. There's black on it and I believe the heroine 
is on the run so like she's escaping a dark and dangerous past maybe what i can remember from the summary is that this woman is on the run our hero stumbles into her and he's the leader of a motorcycle club and he like helps protect her if i'm not mistaken it's only a hundred something pages and i already own the ebook i've been really wanting to read it ever since i downloaded it so um hopefully this one is good next we have sweet and clean now this one was the book that was the hardest for me to figure out what to read because i really ever read a sweet and clean romance book <laughs> i kind of like my steaminess in my romance books um they're so much fun so i decided to like find a romance book that has the word sweet in it and so i just went on audible escape and typed in the word sweet i found this one very intriguing it's called bittersweet love by rochelle allers again off of audible escape it has really great ratings and it's only six and a half hours belinda eaton is dedicated to her job as a history teacher in one of philadelphia's most challenging high schools committing to a man however is not exactly on her agenda then a tragedy brings her closer to gorgeous attorney Griffin Rice, and they have to share custody of their twin goddaughters. Griffin never saw himself as a husband or father material, but suddenly family vacations and Sunday dinners with the girls are the highlight of his schedule. And getting closer to their smart, intriguing godmother is his number one priority. Can he teach her that their partnership has turned into a loving relationship powerful enough to last? That sounded really great. I love kids and books. I believe this is also by an author of color, if I'm not mistaken let's see yes by an author of color this just sounds like a very cute sweet short audiobook that I'm very excited for next is the road trip prompt and for this one I am picking breath of fire by Amanda Boucher the second book in the Kingmaker Chronicles I got this book off of Libby so long ago I think I really renewed it like three times <laughs> um but this is the second book in the Kingmaker Chronicles the first book was a promise of fire this is a romance fantasy trilogy and the reason why this is a road trip is because in the first book they were basically traveling around the whole entire land or in the whole entire book and um, I messaged my friend Nicole who has also read this book and asked her if this also has road trip aspects in it because she just read this one and she said yes so this fits the bill for that I absolutely love Kat I love Griffin uh, I love their romance and I just can't wait to explore more of them in this series next we have friends to lovers now this one was another hard one for me to pick because I feel like I've read all of the like popular friends to lovers so I went and looked at one of Shelby from Shelby Tiger Reads' old recommendation videos of her friends to lovers. I love Shelby so much. She unfortunately is not making videos anymore, but uh, she has amazing recommendations. Please go check out her channel for all the recommendations. Through that video, I found out that one of the books that I have in my Kindle library that I downloaded for free a couple months ago, and it's still currently free by the way, is Wasted Words by Stacey Hart. Some universal truths refuse to be ignored. Peanut butter and jelly are a match made in heaven. Spaghetti and meatballs are best friends forever. And guys like Tyler Knight don't go for girls like Cam Emerson. She knew from the second she met him that he didn't belong on her bookshelf. The six foot eight X light end with a face so all American it could have sold apple pie. So friends to lovers, bookish heroine, I love bookish heroines because I can really connect to them. So uh, another one I'm very excited for. So the next prompt is a diversity. And for this one, I am picking The Beast by Katie Robert, the fourth book in the Wicked Villain series. I am very excited for this book. It's been on my TBR for months. And the reason why this one is diverse is because at least two of the characters are bisexual, if I'm not mistaken. And this is a kind of like BDSM retelling of Beauty and the Beast. And it's a thruple with Gaston, the Beast, and Belle. So, <laughs> very excited. I've heard great things about this book. And I can't wait to dive in. The next prompt is disability rep. Again, if you are trying to find a book, a romance book that has disability representation in it, it's kind of hard to find romance books that have disability representation in it because when you go on Google, not a lot of sources pop up. So I have a whole entire video linked down below where I talk about, I think, 10 or more romances that I love or enjoyed that have disability rep in them. So please go check that video out. If you don't know where to start, if you don't know any books that have disability rep in it, because I know some of them are hard to find. For this one, I am picking a book that has like swarmed the romance genre, romance internet, and that is The Madness of Lord Ian Mackenzie by Jennifer Ashley. This one is on Audible Escape, and the only thing I know about this book is that our main character hero has autism, and it is a historical romance, so 
no one knew what autism was. I've heard great things about this book from Jen from the Book Refuge and I am so excited because I haven't read a lot of autism based romances ever since The Kiss Quotient. I think that was my last one and that book I, I connected to it so much and I've worked with kids with special needs and like they hold a very near and dear place to my heart. So I love how romances are getting this rep in it. So I'm very excited to read this one. Next prompt is old school historical romance. So I think I'm just gonna knock off the old school part of <laughs> the prompt. I decided to pick a historical romance author that is very like old school to historical romance and like everyone knows she's a historical romance author and that is Lisa Kleypas. I've read one or two books by her and they weren't my favorite thing. I think I've read Suddenly You and it was okay and then I started the book that I'm picking and DNF'd it and it was supposed to be Buddy Reed and uh, I think we both didn't finish it. So <laughs> this one that I'm picking is Cold Hearted Rake by Lisa Klepus. I believe it's the first book in the Ravenels. I'm hoping that the audiobook is way better than me physically reading it because I was not into it at all. I found it so boring. The past, first couple chapters did not hook me whatsoever. So hopefully the audiobook will help me get into the story. Um, I got it off of Libby. I don't really know all that much about it. I believe it's about a widow maybe? If I'm not mistaken, that's what I remember. I believe maybe it might be a hate to love romance. We will see. But uh, I'm hoping that I like this book the second time around. My last prompt is category romance. Now, I've never read a category romance before. Sarah made this readathon possible and she loves category romances. So I wanted to give one a try. And so I purchased my first one. It is on the way to me in the mail because it was only $5. And I found one that sounds really interesting to me. It is called After Our Seduction by Janice Maynard. Hopefully I'm pronouncing her name right. I'm so sorry if I'm not. And this is the first book in the Men of Stone River series. When Katie Duncan agrees to work with her boss's brother, she knows she's stepping into the lion's den. The man she'll be living with is her former lover, billionaire Quentin Stone. Their passion sizzled until Katie couldn't accept Quentin's wealthy world. She walked away to save herself. Now the alpha CEO is back in her life, tempting as ever and hell-bent on seducing Katie back into his bed. The cover, super steamy, love it. Hopefully by me reading this book, I'll be introduced to more category romances. I've heard people love category romances. I just have never given them a try, but very excited to dip my toe into this genre or subgenre. Anyways, there you have it. That is my summer fling readathon TBR. I plan to read more books in August. I have some buddy reads I will hopefully be continuing with, but yes, even more books than the 12 I just listed. So uh, hopefully I can get to all of them. And let me know down below if you plan on participating in this readathon. Also let me know if you have read any of these books, what your thoughts are on them, or if you plan to read any of these books, because I'd love to know. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye! Mm -hmm.